I think, uh, yeah, he had changed his mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Elon. It is such a treat and a special opportunity. Welcome to Possible. And while Greg was right. Hey everyone. OK, let's have a round of applause. Um, well, Greg was right. You really need no introduction. But in many ways today is your introduction to the advertising community, right? Hello. I think that's Hello. a round of applause. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> it's widely known that in the morning you run SpaceX. In the oh. afternoon, you head to Tesla. And in the evening, it's Twitter time. And many of you in this room know me, and you know I pride myself on my work ethic. But buddy, I met my match. Yeah. So we're here today to actually talk about your night job. Uh, great, sounds good. <laughs> but with Twitter, you've switched roles a little bit. You've, you know, your other companies, you move from inventor now to reinventor. And when you're inventing something, it's all new. It's a surprise. We don't know what to expect. To reinventor, you challenge legacy. You challenge habits. With Twitter, many of us in this room, we might even go to bed with it in our pocket on the night table. You challenge rituals. And every marketing executive in this room knows the difficulty of a new formula and the challenge of the delicate balance of a rebrand. And now that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, I mean, I'm trying to make Twitter fun and interesting and informative, you know, the optimization for Twitter is uh, maximize the unregretted user time. So, um, so it's, it's not like total number of users or anything. It's just uh, total user minutes unregretted. And we, we actually hit an all-time high um, uh, just yesterday. So uh, it's going well. It's, it's, it's entertaining. So, I think um, entertaining is one you know, way some people in the room describe Twitter today. It is, it is. I, I train wrecks think... arguably are entertaining. <laughs> train wrecks happen <laughs> sometime. They happen sometime if you're dedicated. Training, like a train wreck. Yeah. Um, you got to be dedicated to fixing them. But I think it's important to start with your vision of Twitter 2.0. Yeah. You yourself wrote, I would like to die knowing that humanity has a bright future. It's actually been quite apparent in all your other businesses, from the early days of PayPal, to Tesla, to SpaceX, to maybe you contemplating a new AI company. Yeah. But how does the better humanity for the future fit into your Twitter 2.0 vision? Um, yeah, so, I mean, obviously, with the, the, the goal with, with, with Tesla is to advance sustainable energy. Uh, with SpaceX, uh, we've got Starlink, which is providing internet to the least served in the world, um, and also uh, hopefully getting humanity to Mars and back to the moon, um, so we have an exciting future. I mean, it's important to bear in mind, like some of people say, like, why waste any money on space? Like, don't we have enough problems on Earth? But you know, the thing is that, like, everyone needs a reason to be inspired. People need a reason to wake up in the morning. It can't just be about solving problems. They have to be, th have to be things that really I think I just killed the mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Um, so, uh, and, and going to the moon last century inspired the whole world. Yeah. And, and uh, hopefully going to Mars can do the same thing. Um, so then, it, it, yeah, yeah, it's a great question. Why take some time away from that uh, for, for Twitter? And Mike, you know, what, what I think is, is, is essentially in order for civilization to advance, uh, we've got to have um, freedom of speech. We've got to have a digital, yeah. So, thank you. <laughs> it, 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 it's, it's a bigger deal than you'd think. Um, and it's the kind of thing that you don't know what you're missing until you don't have it. And in a lot of places, people don't have it. And um, so it's important to bear in mind that the nature of free speech is the, the, the acid test for it is are people you don't like allowed to say things that you don't like? 
Otherwise, it's not free. It can't, it can't be just the things that, it can't be just things that you like, because eventually, somebody's not gonna like what you say, and they're gonna shut you up. And that's the, that's the essence of free speech, and that's why it's the First Amendment in this country. And if we lose that, I think we lose the bedrock of democracy. So the bedrock of democracy, I would imagine, is important to everyone in this room. And you talk about yeah. the importance of freedom of speech. Yesterday, you posted a new policy that was titled, Freedom of Speech, Not Freedom of Reach. That yeah. got my attention. Yes. Tell us about your new policy. Right, so freedom of speech, not reach. Um, is, is important in that, um, you know, you, you, like if somebody has something hateful to say, it doesn't mean you should give them a megaphone. Um, they should still be able to say it, but it needs to be uh, not then pushed on people. So if, you know, you can go like in Times Square in New York and you hear people say all kinds of crazy things. Um, that's fine, but we don't, put, we don't broadcast that to Earth. So uh, if, if somebody wants to say something that's uh, technically legal, but, but is, um, you know, by most definitions, uh, hateful, they're not gonna get, we're not going to promote that to, to people. We're not going to recommend hateful content to people. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll put that behind a warning label, saying this, this, this speech is probably something you, you don't want. So, and now this is something we have to be very careful that we roll out, and, and, and that it does not become uh, what, what is intended to be good does not become bad. Um, so, so we want to be delicate with the freedom of reach, not speech. Uh, freedom of speech, not reach. <laughs> um, so we're taking it easy, but it's just, uh, yeah. If if there's if people are saying things that are, you know, making you sad or or, or encouraging negativity, then we're not going to amplify that, which Twitter has done in the past. So how is this new policy different from the other platforms? I, I, don't, I don't know the other platforms. Um. <laughs> I, don't, I don't use them, so. <laughs> that was not a softball question. I want to go on record. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think the interesting Honestly, I, this, this is true before the acquisition of Twitter. I just, I just didn't find the other platforms uh, compelling, to be, you know, just objectively. Okay. So, um, so let's get back to the new policy for a second. Because, again, freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom of reach. Yeah. What does it mean to the advertisers in this room? Have you de-risked the, the opportunity or chance of their campaigns landing in these awful, hateful places? Yeah, I think people may not be aware of this uh, already, but we, we have uh, uh, adjacency controls in place uh, that, are, that are really quite effective. Um, so, you know, it, 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 we can just, you just literally turn on the adjacency control and the ad will not appear next to anything that is remotely negative. Has that gotten better since you arrived? Yeah, we put a lot of effort into it. So you, the, the, I think th there have been some mistakes that have been made where, uh, in, in one case, somebody wanted, thought they were running a control, they, they, they first did a, a test campaign without the controls in place, and they got like 30% negativity. It's like, you, 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 that should never be done. You must put the controls in place because we have excess inventory yeah. <laughs> on negativity. So. Uh, so th so this, the ad engine will naturally say, oh, I've got lots of spots where the negativity, so I'm going to give you a very high negativity. You must put the adjacency controls in place. If you do put the adjacency controls in place, uh, negativity is going to be uh, almost nothing. So this is a good early step of your impact since you got to Twitter, no? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, it's worth noting that, um, I mean, Apple is a remained a ma major advertiser. Yeah. Uh, Disney has remained a major advertiser. They literally advertise children's shows yep. on Twitter, and they wouldn't do that if it was uh, filled with hate speech. You want to get back to the labeling and this new policy. Who decides and how does it get decided that it's labeled? As what I think um, some people have talked about, if you've said it this way yourself, um, 
if it's awful but lawful, it's going to stay up. It just won't see sunlight. You won't yes. amplify it. But who decides that labeling? Well, we, we have a set of words. <laughs> 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 and we're, So we, we open source the uh, recommendation algorithm. We're also going to open source the words uh, that, that are associated with the, the uh, you know, freedom of speech, not reach. Uh, and people can argue over the words. Um, I think they're you know, reasonably accurate. Um, and, and like I said, it, it is working, or, or Disney would have pulled their ads a long time ago, and they haven't. So, uh, yeah. Um, but I think in order to really build trust, you have to have transparency. You, it can't be that here's this black box, something's happening in here, we won't tell you what it is, trust us. I think that's BS. Um, if you want to trust something, you've got to know how it works. And so the, that, that's why we're open sourcing the algorithm. Now, open sourcing the algorithm is kind of embarrassing. People have found all sorts of things that were wrong um, and foolish and you know, misguided with, with the algorithm. And we've actually fixed, I think at this point, over 100 issues with the algorithm. Um, so it's, been, it's actually been very helpful uh, to open source it. Um, and we're going to open source the entire thing. The, the, you sh basically, you should be able to recreate the probability of, of a tweet being recommended based on, on, the, on what we've open sourced. If you can't recreate it, then we haven't shown you everything. Right. So it's, it's, it's really complete transparency. And that, I think that's the only path to trust. I don't think there's another path. So trust is probably one of the top two or three words that every marketing executive in this room would say is table stakes for any company that they invest in, any company that they can move forward with. You just talked about transparency, open sourcing. Mm -hmm. I would say that that's the difference between those other platforms you either don't use or never heard of. Yeah. And um, open sourcing or transparency is, again, uh, uh, another one of those table stake requirements. But this labeling, this new policy, talking about if it's awful but not unlawful, does it apply to your tweets? Wow. Listen to that. Uh, yes, I it does, actually. <laughs> it does. It does. Yeah. Uh, moreover, um, my tweets are also subject to community notes. Yeah. Uh, so if I say something inc incorrect, a community, a community notes function is actually very effective. It applies to advertisers, too, FYI. Um, so, uh, and there have been a few cases where there have been ads that were not completely accurate, and uh, the community notes has corrected them. And they've corrected me, and um, they've corrected heads of state multiple times. Uh, so community, community notes is extremely effective. I think that's an um, yeah. incredible acknowledgment of the progression of Twitter 2.0 and the importance of this new policy and protection for everyone, right? And you're talking about fully democratizing the platform, mm -hmm. which, which leads you to community notes because you're actually believing in the people <coughs> yeah. who are able to often, from the front lines, give their point of view that clarify what some people might say is bias. Yeah. Like I said, the, the important thing is um, that uh, we're an open book. So um, you can literally see if there's some line of logic that gives me special privileges. Yeah. Literally everything. There's nothing that is hidden. Um, so uh, yeah, it's it, it, whatever. Obviously, it, 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 people are not going to trust Twitter if uh, there are different rules for me or others versus the rest of Twitter. Yeah. That's, that's, that's going to diminish trust. So everything that applies to the rest of Twitter must apply to me. Yep. Um, and uh, I think this is going to, I think it's going to be extremely powerful. And I think uh, it, it will result in Twitter being the most trusted place on the internet by far. So Why would you trust anything else? Uh, and let's talk about that. Why would you trust anyone else, especially yeah. if you? the most followed man on Twitter. You've gone from consumer of a product you loved to now the owner of a product that 
Yeah, yes. it's like the hair club for men. <laughs> it, <laughs> it might be a be careful what that you ask that for type of thing. <laughs> um, but you know what? <laughs> if, if you're held to the same level of accountability that everyone else is in the platform, there are some, this, this room, I think it's a second just to take a beat and talk about, you've talked about recently you are maybe almost close to cash flow positive, right? Yeah, you we're, might we're, be, we're like one, our nose is like just about okay. a quarter. So maybe a quarter or two <laughs> away from profitability. The people in this room are your accelerated path to profitability. Yeah. On, Okay. Please advertise on Twitter, that would be much appreciated, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a decent bit of skeptics in the room. What? Yeah. He's <laughs> never heard of it. The guy works in space. I didn't hear what's going on. Um, yeah, thanks. There's people who cannot separate, or they're challenged by separating the man, his opinions, and the microphone that he now owns. Yeah, but I, uh, I mean, look, before the acquisition, I was the most interacted with account on Twitter. So it's not like, you know, um, it's actually all, all that different. Um, so before I even announced uh, acquisition, I didn't have the most number of followers, but I had the highest number of interactions on the entire platform before an acquisition offer was even announced. Um, and that's when there were like, you know, a fair number of people at Twitter who weren't exactly my best friends. So. <laughs> Well, you know, you open yourself up to this transparency. Your tweets are eligible for this labeling. You've actually unblocked all of your yeah. followers. I, I, right? I, I deleted my block list. Right, you delete your block list. You've also been told that you never want to lose your feedback loop, specifically your negative feedback loop. Yes, thankfully Twitter uh, will always provide you with a negative feedback loop. Um, I have to push you a little, because there's a lot of folks in this room, they vote with their pocketbooks, and, or wallets, I should say. I like pocketbooks. What the nice ones. Digital, um, digital wallet. <laughs> <laughs> but they can't cross that transom. They have a challenge with your points of view, your opinions, and still holding back from unlocking the full power of Twitter. What do you say to them in this room? Well, I think, first of all, if you want to know what my opinions are, you should really, I guess, uh, look at my Twitter. Um, if you read the, <laughs> and, and, and uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt, because it's hard to uh, convey tone uh, with a tweet. So something that may be sarcastic or a joke or something like that may come across as serious when it isn't. Um, but a lot of the, 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 the issue is negative amplification in the media. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, you know, I recently had an interview with an organization called BBC, which you may have heard of. Maybe. And um, that was entertaining. Um, but, you know, the reporter was saying, uh, claiming that there was all this, that, he, that, that he'd seen all this hate speech on Twitter. And I'd said, okay, well, can you give me a single example? And he couldn't. Right. Not even one. So then I'd say, like, okay, well, you know, if, if, if your personal experience on Twitter, that's how you should judge the platform, yeah. um, as opposed to what is represented in, say, in, in sort of the traditional media. And it's important to bear in mind, the traditional media is a competitor to Twitter. So they compete for your advertising dollars. They, 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 they compete against Twitter for your advertising dollars. If it is possible for them to diminish Twitter and reduce the probability of advertising dollars going to Twitter, uh, and at first, uh, it's like basically you shouldn't take a competitor's word for it. Yeah. Like it's it's it well, doesn't. But it doesn't, don't you think? Um, I am most, blameless. <laughs> most news organizations. Well, maybe a little. Okay. Most news organizations have a codependent relationship with Twitter, and I can, I, I could speak on behalf of the industry, but I'll speak on behalf of my own company. Um, we have a big partnership with your company, big right. distribution partnership. Are there days where I see some of your tweets and I say, I wish I could say, stop helping the situation? Um, but should you be held to a different or a higher standard 
that you're the owner, but you also have the most followers, and a lot of people think you might be too provocative. Um, no, I think the same standard should apply to me as applies to everyone on Twitter, just as it does on positive or negative. So what do you do? Same for everyone. Now, now, the, now the thing that, that, that a lot of traditional journalists don't like is they don't like being put on the same platform as the average citizen. They don't like their voice being the same. They're pretty mad about that. Yes, I, uh, there are several news organizations who don't like your push for democratization and what they believe is the devaluing of the badges because they yes. were differentiated. So is that just a moment that's in deliberate. time? That's deliberate. Is that just a moment in time? No, that's deliberate. I, I think it's very important for, to, to elevate citizen journalism. Uh, I think it's very important to hear the voice of the people, the actual voice of the people, not the filtered voice of the people. And let the people choose the narrative and let the people determine the truth um, and not five editors and chiefs of uh, major publications. Do you, do, you, do you want to know what's really going on or do you want their opinion? You know, it's, it's a handful of people. And I, think, I think we want to know the voice of the people, the true voice of the people. So let's, let me kind of pull you back into what's important to the people in this room, and that's protection for their ad campaigns. Sure. So yesterday was a great start. Protection from any of the provocative speech that is labeled. What is your, does it get better from there? What's your real North Star? Where is, where is Twitter a couple of years from now? When I show up on Twitter, is it just a global town square where I'm talking in number of characters? Or, or where does it evolve to? What happens in my town square? Commerce? Yeah, I mean, what I've said is that Twitter is effectively an accelerant to an idea I've had for a long time, which is, I call it sort of X, the everything app. Yeah. Um, which is to have an, you know, a, a sort of a platform that is uh, so useful that you, you find it, it, it is, essential to conduct your life. Uh, so that means like, you know, we do obviously do uh, payments. Um, we provide, it r really, really make a, a good meaningful communication privately as well as publicly. So that means we need to have a direct message system that is, that, that offers uh, voice calls, video calls, uh, encry encrypted communications so that your communications are private and, and, and Twitter and others cannot spy on them. Um, and just to uh, be incredibly useful. Um, so you've got a massive platform. You have a vision yeah. that is a spectrum of just daily open sourced conversation. And, and they can conduct their lives, their business, their commerce, whatever they can do on your platform. That's a pretty big vision. But, but in the middle should be um, advertising opportunity. That sounds like a great opportunity. I can talk about my brand, I can get my customers to communicate, and then they could also buy stuff. That sounds yes. pretty good, right? You'll be able to buy things just directly on Twitter. One click, boom, done. But they need to feel that there is a, an opportunity for them to influence what you're building that vision, what we're doing here, whether it's me trying to push and prod you uh, on your tweets. Um, for example, you've said uh, you probably shouldn't tweet after 3 a.m. Well, I've got Probably good into, advice for all of us. I've gotten myself into trouble a few times. Um, I'm, I'm very aware of those. Um, so after 3 a.m., you travel all over the world. Lord knows how you handle time zones in space. Will you commit to be a little more uh, specific and not tweet after 3 a.m.? People in this room would, would like to see that. Um, It'll make them feel more I confident. Will, I will aspire to, to tweet uh, less ever after 3 a.m. But I mean, it, it is important that, you know, I mean, if I were to say, yes, you can influence me, that would be wrong. That would be very wrong. Because me, that would be a diminishment of freedom of speech. But I want to be specific about influencing. It's more of an open feedback loop for the advertising experts in this room 
to help develop Twitter into a place where they will be excited about investing more money, product development, yeah. ad safety, sure. content moderation. That's what the influence is. Yeah, I think um, it's totally cool to say that you want to have your advertising appear in certain places in Twitter and not in other places. But it is not cool to, to, to try to say what Twitter will do. And if that means losing advertising dollars, we lose it. Okay. But freedom of speech is paramount. So Twitter 1.0 had a uh, very well-populated, much-loved influence council. I know I don't. Uh, I, I think we need to change the name. Elon does not want to be influenced. But it was well. really a recurring feedback loop from your key stakeholders, your advertisers, where they had recurring access or would have recurring access to you. Would you commit from this stage today to reinstate that council to be named later? Well, I don't think it should be influence council. That and you have to say, I, I would be wary of that creating a backlash among the public, because if the public thinks that, that you know, their, their views are being determined by you know, a, a, a small number of CMOs in America, they will be, like, I think, upset about that. Um, but feedback, I think, is appropriate. Um, and you know, at, at the end of the day, uh, if somebody's spending money for their ad campaign, it needs to yield results for their organization, or, or it doesn't make sense. Um, and you know that 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 that, inc that includes the sort of softer perception issues as, as well as the more direct uh, does it move the needle on sales? Um, so you know there's there's legitimate concerns that advertisers have that I want to hear. Um, and we're, we're going to move to live Q and A um, after the prepared questions, and perhaps uh, you can ask some of those right here, because um, I think some of these things should be discussed in an open forum. You know, um, yeah, so um, I think having, you know, getting, getting, I mean, the reason I'm here is to get feedback. So, you know, mm -hmm. what, what is this but uh, feedback, you know, and, and, and to be asked questions. Um, and we're, we're trying to achieve here a sensible, um, you know, middle ground or, or, or try to satisfy a, a, a range of, of things, which is how do we ensure that the public has their voice, um, even if you don't like the voice at times, um, but also that you're able to uh, serve your brands um, and improve, improve the, the perception of your brands and uh, improve sales as well at the, at the end of the day. I mean, I think there is, um, when, when advertising is relevant to users, and especially if the message is entertaining and interesting, it's content. Um, on, and then the other side of it, if, if, the, if, the, if the ad is not relevant to the user and it's you know, perhaps strident or something, then, then obviously that's, that's not, uh, that's, that's, that's spam. So advertising can go all the way from um, spam to compelling content. And I really want to uh, focus on, obviously, the, the compelling content side of things. Make it relevant, make it interesting, um, you know, funny, informative. Um. And I think, I think you're right. I think that's actually where this room can help with the feedback. They're experts in knowing with the right consumer set that they're trying to reach what is relevant, what makes good advertising. And since I think I heard that you committed to continued feedback, it might be a good time, like Twitter, which is where it happens in real time, to open up the room to questions. Elon has suggested that he's open. OK, we have a few. So please, ask Elon. You want to go? One of the things I should say is uh, that, that has been sort of really broken for a long time at Twitter is, is that um, when you run an ad campaign, you couldn't even do basic things like uh, keywords. Yeah. 
like honestly, this is it blew my mind. Um, so we've now added to to where you can say uh, what, what as as pr simple as it sounds, uh, what keywords do you want an ad to appear next to? So if, if a tweet has a certain you know is, is about a subject, um, then you should be able to put the ad right there. And um, I was talking to David Zaslav at uh, you know um, one of his and. He was he was he was literally, he was literally saying, "Look, I just want to be able to put the trailer for White Lotus next to where people are talking about White Lotus." I was like, "Yeah, that is obviously a good thing to do. <laughs> that is the right place to put the ad." And so, it, it, as mind blowing as it is, Twitter did not have that functionality yeah. until recently, yeah. which is insane. Um, but now it does. So, uh, you know, talking about listening to. You know, uh, key advertiser partners uh, listen to what David said, and we're like, we're doing it. So now, bingo, we can have White Lotus ads next to White Lotus discussions, <laughs> which is exactly where it should be. <laughs> so it's a new beginning. All right. All right, we're going to start. Thank you. Uh, on your side. Elon, thank you so much. Over to your left here. My name is Jonathan Berry. I'm from the Dunhill Family Office and the Earth Trust Fund focused on regenerative innovation and exponential technology. I'm absolutely obsessed with the work that you're doing in the world. Thank you for incarnating in this lifetime and helping all of us ascend to the next level of this experience of life. Um, I'm curious about your thoughts on alignment with AI. Oh, man. And what are the strategies that are currently being implemented? I'm currently creating my own alignment protocol, which I would love to submit to your team. I like it. Well, I wasn't expecting an AI discussion right off the bat. Um, um, my brother and I have this, this rule that if we're at a party, we're not allowed to talk, to, uh, talk about either AI or the simulation. <laughs> <laughs> because otherwise, the, the conversations go there so often. Um, so I've been thinking about AI safety for a long time, because I think this is a significant existential threat to humanity. Um, the best thing I can come up with for AI safety is to make it a maximum truth-seeking uh, AI, maximally curious. Um, uh, have its optimization function be to understand the nature of the universe. If that is its optimization function, I think it will actually want to preserve and extend human civilization because we're just much more interesting than, say, an asteroid with nothing on it. Um, so I think, I think, I think, my, my intuition, my biological neural net suggests that a maximally curious AI uh, is the safest AI. Um, and a maximally truth-seeking AI is the safest AI. And if you try to, you know, we have to be careful with the alignment stuff, or we have to, you know, and I think we, we, we definitely don't want to teach an AI to lie, because um, that, that is a path to a dystopian future. Um, the, I mean, the, the essence of, of 2001, a space odyssey, um, was that the AI was given, was basically told to lie. It was, it was, yeah. it was told to hide the, the, the fact that it was going to see the monolith, um, or that it was taking the crew to the monolith. So it was both told to take the crew to the monolith, and the crew cannot know about the monolith. The conclusion the AI came to was kill the crew and take them to the monolith. So <laughs> the problem solved. <laughs> so you want to be really careful about um, any, any kind of deception, um, and I think in AI, we want to program the AI to be as truthful as possible, even if that, even if that truth is not politically correct. So. Thank you. Hey, Elon. Hey, um, amazing to be here. My name is Martinez. I work in news media. And my question is, is you're saying Twitter is where we're going to be getting our information from now on, or social media. Is this the end of centralized publishers, news media, and we're going into the decentralized information era? Thank you. Um, no, that's, that, that's a good observation. Um, that, that uh, so, you know, the citizen journalism is, uh, is essentially decentralized uh, news. Um, now, that, no, this will, will obviously be, if somebody is a great writer uh, for the New York Times or Journal or Post or whatever, uh, newspaper, Herald, um, if they're a good, great writer, they, they will 
still gain a significant following as a function of their excellent writing. Um, so somebody who is an excellent writer will, will still get disproportionate attention. Um, but I think it is also important for us to, to, to decentralize uh, the, you know, what is written and, and what, the narrat what narratives are chosen. Um, because even if everything in a newspaper is 100% correct, they're still choosing what to write about. They're choosing the narrative. Um, so I think it's important for the public to be able to choose the narrative as well. Um, so it, it's, it's not really you know, that traditional pu publications go away, but really that we, 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 we um, give, give more weight. We, 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 um, we enable the voice of the people to rise. Uh, hi, uh, Linda, Elon, thank you so much for your insightful talk. Uh, my name is Maria. I run PR and marketing company focused on tech and Web3. Uh, I live here in Miami, but originally from Russia. Uh, I wanted to ask you two questions, if you allow me. First one, uh, why did you make blue tick, verification tick on Twitter uh, paid? Uh, is it strictly for profit or there was some other logic behind it? And second question is, uh, can I take a selfie with you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there might be a, quite a line on the selfie front. Um, but honestly, selfies are the vein of my existence. Um, so, but sure. Um, so you no, know, the, the 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 issue with the, the the way that blue checks were handed out historically at Twitter was was um, not in a not, not always in a sensible way or not always in a a good way, um, and so uh, and and the same check was given out whether you were sort of a government official or. Uh, you know, a, a major company or a person. So there's no, dis there wasn't really any distinguishment between between the, what what does a blue check mean, um, and and a lot of blue checks were, you know, you could have been an intern at a small publication ten years ago and you still have a blue check, and then a lot of them were for sale, and, and not not for sale on the dark web. I'm talking about you could Google blue check for sale, <laughs> and buy a blue check. Anyone could, um, and there was some corruption at, within Twitter as well in terms of paying people at Twitter for blue checks that was not appropriate. So the question is, how do we clear all of that out? Um, and how do we create, a, 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 you know, w within reason, a level playing field? Um, so that, uh, like I said, the average citizen can uh, be a journalist. Um, and, if, and, 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 that, and that we really want to judge journalism, we want to judge stories based on the quality of the content not the publication that is behind it. Um, and there are some incredibly good individuals um, who, may, who maybe couldn't get a job at a, at a major newspaper, but actually they're great writers and they're incredibly truthful and, and, and good. So um, it was really just to, to kind of level the playing field. And the, the thing about the, you know, you, you can get one for like $7 a month if you do it on the web, which is, it's not a lot. Um, but it, it, it it gives us the, the, the added element of requiring a credit card and a phone number from a reputable carrier. Um, and so th this, this, this is a, I mean, we're gonna get kind of technical here, but it's a, it's a necessary defense against bots. So today uh, with advanced AI, the, the, they, can, they can pass every kind of test for a human. Um, so you can actually create, on one computer, 100,000 accounts. So then ha that all sound human and pass every human test. So how do you know which one, one's real? Um, so effectively, by charging a small amount of money and requiring a credit card and a phone number, we increase the cost of a fake account by literally 1,000, if not 10,000. And so, and, and my prediction is that any social media company that does not require a small amount of money and does not do verification will cease to be relevant. I mean, I, I can go to talk forever if you want.
Um, one more. One more. So it's, it's not up to me. It's, uh, uh, it's, a, it's really up to you guys. Hi. I'm happy to talk longer if you want. <laughs> Hi. My name is Carol Christ, and I had the great honor to serve as First Lady of Florida. And it's a, an incredible honor to be here with all of you and this beautiful conference. And this is an extraordinary panel and this discussion and the great work you do for humanity, our planet. And I'm just so um, impressed with everything you're doing at Twitter and how open you are with everything you're doing. I think it's a great service to our country and the world. And um, I, I really am very grateful for, to you for that. And. Um, it may be a little depressing, but we do have an election year coming up, and it's incredibly important. Well, not yet. This next year. Politics. <laughs> <It's>, um, <laughs> yeah. um, the world is watching, and um, it's an incredibly important time. A lot is at stake, and um, I would love to know what you. Um, I'm sure you have a lot going on, and I would love to hear What's some of what you have to say on. and what we can look forward to hearing from Twitter. Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I mean, I do think it's very important for elections uh, domestically and internationally um, that we have an open and transparent platform. That's why I think it's just the, the open sourcing of the algorithm um, and uh, complete transparency is essential um, so that people know what's going on. They know that something is not being artificially suppressed or amplified. Um, and so, we, we, and, and as, as I mentioned, when we open sourced, uh, the recommendation algorithm. Now, there's still other elements of Twitter that haven't been open sourced, but will be. The, we've, we've, the, the public found many um, errors in, in our recommendation platform that we fixed, and we'll keep doing that. Um, the, what, what really matters is, does the, is, is there both the reality and the perception of a platform that the public believes they can, that, that they can trust? And, 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 it, and I, like you said, if you don't have trans, in anything that's not, if, if any platform that does not have transparency, I wouldn't trust it with a damn. So I think what we heard today is some really um, important and profound things. First of all, Elon has committed to being accessible to everyone for continual feedback. He's also opened up himself to also participate in the new transparency and safety rules that they posted yesterday. Just remember, right? Freedom of speech doesn't mean freedom of reach. And if freedom of speech, as he says, is the bedrock of, of this country, I'm not sure there's anyone in this room who could disagree with that. Could I get a round of applause for that? Yeah. But I want to be clear, the path here today wasn't without um, a lot of chatter, because this guy is here, there's always a lot of chatter, but I believe if this is a marketing conference for marketing executives that influence culture in this country, it is the responsibility of everybody in this room to offer a helping hand and to say, how can we help, how can we make it better? So I say we're open for solutions, and uh, you got a man who's committed to try his best not to tweet after 3 a.m., um, but open to your feedback. And I'd like to really thank everyone who's spending their time here today. Thank you. Thank you.